Welcome back. Today we're starting a series about electric motors and speed control and what's possible and what is what's not possible, what electric motor nameplates mean and how to interpret the writings on the nameplate because they can be quite confusing sometimes. Um, also we talk about inverters, what's the difference between all these inverters, um, different types of electric motors. So I believe this is most probably at least a five to six episode series uh, and the very beginning will be a bit boring but it's important to understand the basics to understand what we're doing and uh, also to understand the limits of what you can do and what you can't do and obviously what to consider if you drive a motor near the limits or exceeding the limits. Being a electrical subject this is dangerous. Electricity can kill. So if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't have any idea about electricity keep your hands off. Ask a expert to help you. In certain countries you must be a qualified electrician otherwise you're not allowed to handle anything above 48 volts or so. I'm a qualified person so I know what I'm doing and I know the dangers. Um, I may not always talk about the dangers but please bear in mind this is dangerous and the sticker says it actually it's dangerous. Anyway let's start off with a little selection of uh, bits here. These are inverter drives. What they do and what they are for um, we talk later. This is an inverter drive as well, believe it or not. And also this one. And this one. They all built for special purposes. These are generally for mains voltage. These are for lower voltages. And in at the front here, hope that's all visible, we got a selection of electric motors. Now anyone may recognize this one. This is a sort of standard electric motor. I've got, I've got bigger motors and I may throw in some pictures of really nice big electric motors I worked in the past with. Uh, they're just too big for my desk here. Um, this is a three-phase AC motor as well. We come to that later. Also this little motor on my tool post grinder is a three-phase AC motor. Um, we come to that later as well. Um, this is an AC motor as well, however this is a two-phase motor. It's a stepper motor. But essentially they have the same working principle as a three-phase motor. There are, might be some people who, rest, who recognize what that is. Uh, very rare nowadays. These floppy drives use an AC motor here, which is actually a stepper motor as well, and also a stepper motor here. So these are all AC motors. And believe it or not, this thing, some people may recognize that it's an alternator of a car. It's a three-phase motor or a three-phase generator, which doesn't matter because any motor can be a generator. We come to that subject later. Um, you can see the three wires here, so it's a three-phase motor. And uh, I will run that as a motor just to demonstrate it does actually run as a motor uh, at a, in a later episode when we come to different types of inverters and uh, how three-phase works in general and all the voltages and things like that. Um, put that aside for now. So. We will probably cover also single phase electric motors, in particular the subject how to reverse them because that seems to be a big knowledge black hole in certain areas. Uh, if you look around on eBay, uh, you find so many machines converted to single phase and, and it says it doesn't reverse anymore. It is a relatively simple thing to do if you know how and um, so we will cover that in one episode, probably three or four, how to reverse single phase motors. Essentially it's the same way as to do it on a three phase motor, 
uh, you just reverse the faces all you need to know is how to do that and uh, what to look at because if you do it wrong you, man you, you, you if you do it wrong you eventually fry your motor so let's look at these two little ones here this is a call it standard AC motor as most people of you know this thing um, we come to the nameplate of this motor later because it's got a very good nameplate for explaining what I'm doing here this is a AC motor as well it's a three-phase AC motor and it says 0.1 kilowatt at 105 volts so could we run that on a 400 volt mains no it will smoke most likely uh, no matter what the frequency is if you look at the uh, if you look at the speed uh, it says 3000 rpm so this thing is either a two or four pole runs at uh, 50 hertz or 100 hertz we don't know i don't know i just picked that off my pile to show it um, so that means electric motors don't always come in that flavor they or three-phase motors don't always come in that flavor they come in all sorts of shapes I think that's enough for the introduction um, let's start with the nameplate of this little motor here so in Europe I know this difference in this this is different in the states but uh, essentially the same principles apply in Europe we have a 230 volt 400 volt 50 Hertz mains this means you got usually 230 volt single phase and 400 volt three phase however um, there are areas where you may not have that there are funny configuration sometimes but essentially a 230 400 volt mains should be standard in the, in in all over Europe uh, it's not always the case because I've got about 245 volts here um, so if you apply common sense you think you can only run a motor with 230 400 volts on the main plate luckily this little bugger does say that we can run that sort of um, 240 415 or 220 380 forget the bottom ones at the moment uh, 50 Hertz so there's nothing wrong to run that motor with 230 400 volts because your mains will have some variation anyway um, it just gives you the rated range of that motor um, at 50 hertz supply hopefully the numbers are visible but I'm, I'm gonna read those out anyway uh, uh, don't worry about the speeds at the moment we come to that later um, however this nameplate says 254 440 volts at 60 hertz as well well we don't have 60 hertz in Europe but if you live in uh, in the States or in, in, in um, parts of Asia which do have 60 Hertz you can run that motor on that mains as well the nameplate basically gives you the range you can run so 50 Hertz the lowest voltage you, you should run that motor is 220 and the highest voltage is 450 volts at 50 Hertz why the frequency is so important we talk later about it if you are in a 60 Hertz country you can run that at 254 440 but if it's going plus minus a little bit it doesn't really matter 5% is always good uh, electric motors are usually not super critical if it comes to voltage more important is the frequency uh, because this frequency determines the speed why this is the case we talk about later as well um, so you could take that motor wire it up to a three-phase plug providing to do the wiring right plug it in and this thing will run 
at about 900 rpm because it's that's the rated speed of that motor so how are you gonna speed control a, a motor it's common on DC motors you just variate the voltage uh, but lower voltage means lower torque so at the bottom end let's go to a DC motor shortly if that's if that's your speed and that's your torque or power it looks like that so increasing the voltage is increasing the torque and also the speed in within some relationship on a three-phase AC motor we don't talk about single-phase motors because they're behaving differently our torque curve looks like that so this this is rated speed make that 900 rpm at this motor at 50 hertz this is zero speed I know this is wrong your experts out there will tell me it's wrong but for understanding um, we stick to that curve at the moment uh, that means if, if you if you switch the motor on it will have almost rated torque and runs up to your rated speed the rated speed is at rated load it will idle higher why that is will come later so what we can do we can lower the voltage and the torque will drop and the, therefore the speed will will go towards this end maybe 800 rpm but it's difficult to control three-phase AC voltage there are not many variants around to do that so what we do and that's the whole subject of the whole series we use an inverter drive what does this do if you look at the nameplate of this one it says input 380 to 480 volts 48 to 63 Hertz so it doesn't matter what mains voltage and mains frequency ha we have this thing is happy with everything so that's the first issue solved if you live in a country with different mains frequency if you look at the output it says output three phase 0 to 240 Hertz AC voltage range 0 to 460 so that means apparently this box provides us an output frequency from 0 to 240 Hertz so we can basically reproduce any mains on this world and the output voltage range of 0 to 460 volts which is this which this box is generating um, makes it possible to accommodate everything what's on that nameplate so if we take that train of thought further we look at our nameplate again just thinking out loud for now if you look at our nameplate again it says 250 440 volt 60 Hertz this motor does 1080 rpm actually at higher power um, the power at the 50 Hertz is 0.18 and the power at um, 60 Hertz is 0.21 so <coughs> without thinking any further if you set that thing to 440 volts 60 Hertz that thing does exactly what the nameplate is asking us there's one catch an inverter drive can only feed as an output voltage what you feed in so if you feed in 400 volts you can't make 440 volts uh, there are ways to do that but you need to you need to you need to fiddle with the input voltage a little bit so as our mains may not provide more than about 415 420 volts we we actually not going to reach that point we can run it faster yes but it will lose power and that's where this torque curve comes into place because our voltage drops below what we want we we're having less power we cannot run higher speed but 
on uh, less rated torque. There are different types of inverters around. As you may have noticed, this one is a 400 volt inverter. They do the same thing. It just happened that I've got some Allen Bradleys here. You can any inverter drive will will pretty much tell you the same. Uh, this is a different type of inverter. It says 200 to 240 volts, 48 to 63 hertz. Um, and it also says AC voltage range 180 to 264 volts input. Output 0 to 240, output range 0 to 230 volts. So, as most people know or think, a three phase mains is 400 volts or something around that. So, how can you run that motor on? Uh, 230 volts. Well, the nameplate says 230 380. There's a reason for your red plug provides 380 between the faces. Just let me draw that up a little bit here. The reason for that is we got 400 volt on each leg. Hopefully that's fairly visible. Probably use a black pen next time. Uh, we got 400 volt on each leg. However, this is a three-phase system, the coils do have 230 volts. So if we have a means of rearranging the coils, we can run the same motor at 230 volts and that's always the lower voltage. So the higher voltage is always in star, that's called star, and the, high, the lower voltage is delta, where you get your coils here. And here, so that's L1, 2 and 3. So now we can run that on a 230 volt three phase mains. And that's exactly, exactly what we do if we run a 230 volt inverter. So let's, let's take that apart. If we look inside, we can see these little bridges here. So if we take them out, this is delta, this is low voltage. If you, if you put the bridges here, it's high voltage. So your mains goes here, here and here. So now we are in star configuration. That means star is always the higher voltage on the nameplate. Don't leave that out, always put it just on top of it, because if someone wants to change the configuration, uh, we need it, because you need 3 for delta. So, that's how you change the voltage given on the nameplate between low and high voltage. Again, star is always high voltage, delta is low voltage. There there are motors around which are 400, 690 volts. Apparently, the low voltage is 400, so you can't do that this way. Uh, and the high voltage is 690 because there are mains systems around with 690 volts, uh, especially on very high power motors. Um, they use a higher voltage to keep the currents down, which makes the cables cheaper. And it's a significant uh, amount of money you can save because copper is expensive. Uh, okay, so now we can't run this motor on uh, 230 volt anymore because we would actually lack power. It will turn, but it will have probably about 20% or so uh, torque. However, there are tricks 
to make that motor doing probably around about 0.35 kilowatts, so 1.8, factor 1.8 um, easily without damaging it, without overloading it. Uh, it's just understanding what an inverter drive can do. So if we look at different types of inverters, leave the little ones around, they, this thing produces three phase just on a lower voltage and it looks a bit different. It's actually uh, this one as well. This is just for driving these uh, little brushless motors, which are 10 volt AC motors or 12 volt AC motors, three phase motors. In a late, later episode of this series, we will go a little bit deeper into limits and, and possibilities of electric motors and where, where how far you can actually go. Um, so to to wrap it up, if you got a 230 volt single phase mains, you need a motor which has 230 volts on his plate. A 4690 volt will not work. What you need is an inverter which is rated for somewhere in the voltage range input, which is around about 230 volts here in, in Europe. Uh, in the UK and in, in the States it's different. Um, if you lucky and you have a three-phase supply, you can use uh, something which says 380 to 480 volts. Uh, and obviously you can set your motor to the higher voltage. However, you don't need to do that actually, because the inverter drive can produce that 230 volt, because it's within the envelope of the of the drive. The drive is rated up to 460 volts. It doesn't matter if you run a motor which has lower voltage. So, if you take a 230 volt drive here, which makes single phase to three phase, and we take our little uh, solo motor here. This motor says 105 volts. It's a three-phase motor. Can we run that on this drive? Yes, we can. All we need to do is telling the drive that this motor is rated for 105 volts. And it will run all day with no issues whatsoever. We could even run one of these motors with such an inverter drive. It would be stupid because the thing the problem is we hit the current limit, but essentially you can drive it with a big 100 kilowatt drive which does the current. You can run one of these little motors, which is not a problem. Um, it's just stupid because this motor is rated for about 50 amps at 400 watts. Looks small, but this is true. 50, 50 amps, 400 watts of power. If you look at the little drive here, it says 10 amps, so we will not get to 400 watts because we can't get the voltage. Where it comes to a little bit of theory again. What is power? Not considering three phase uh, things at the moment. Power is essentially voltage times current. So volts times amps gives you power in watts. Um, if you have low voltage you need a lot of amps. That's the reason why this little motor draws 40 amps at 12 volts. Um, as I said before if you've got a 690 volt motor at 100 kilowatts it doesn't need a lot of current because the voltage is so much higher. It's it's like in a car, if you got a low rev diesel engine, it needs a lot more torque to produce the same power as you run a high rev motorbike engine at 15,000 RPM. They may have the same power, but uh, the revs are obviously different. And that's exactly what you got here as well with motors. The higher the rated speed or the higher the running speed of the electric motor, the higher the output power 
with a given torque. That's the reason why this little bugger has so much power because it runs at 10,000 RPM. So it doesn't need the same torque as this motor and that's one of the reasons why it's a little smaller than this one. Let's drive the inverter drives a little bit on this episode because I don't want to make it too long. Um, and some of the possibilities and that should then conclude this uh, episode. We, we're gonna, I'm gonna prepare something for the next episode where I hook that motor up and uh, we can run that up and down and play with the drive to make it a little bit more understanding. So if you take our speed core for again, this is our this is our rated speed at 900 RPM. Um, this is our torque um, at a given voltage. We would have a torque drop, but what we could do, we can run, we can double the frequency and probably end up here. And having similar power, because half the torque, double the speed, gives us the same power. The torque is is just dropping. This is this is uh, this is torque here. So if if that's if that's 1800 RPM, if this is 1800 RPM here, um, we will have roughly about half the torque, a bit less actually. Um, the motor will be running at 100 Hertz. With the same power, but double the speed. There are some tricks where you can actually move that thing up but you need three phase power and that's that's one of the things we're going to talk in that whole episode because the nameplate is only the nameplate as it is because the common mains frequencies are either 50 or 60 hertz if, if you look at some railway systems in in southern europe or in, in central europe they run at 16 to 30 hertz uh, why that is um, there are reasons for because very old electric motors were easier to control on speed on lower frequency and um, that's why I did it and uh, I think they still run the frequencies at least on cert in certain areas um, it makes the motors bigger it makes the transformers bigger it makes everything bigger uh, so that's not our subject we, but we could run that motor on 16 to a third hertz it will do um, it will do about a third of our frig of, of the speed, so 300 RPM. If you speed control the motor, you're running into two problems. I wouldn't call it problems, it's things to consider. At the very low end, you lack cooling because the fan is driven by the shaft, and if you run slower, you don't have the airflow. Essentially, you're driving the same current, so you're producing the same heat not really but essentially you produce the same heat um, but you can't get that thing cooled so you're gonna fit a fan on the back oh, um, but anything which drives some air you can buy this this uh, you can buy this huts with some uh, inter integral fans but you can also use a whatever a computer fan or whatever anything which drives air through and if you look at normal workshop applications on a lathe or a milling machine, this thing doesn't run flat out um, at full power for all the time. Most of the time the lathe is just spinning, it doesn't really do anything. Except you're cutting metal, but how long is that? It's not for hours, it's just minutes. And if you if you watch my videos, you will see my lathe has, doesn't have a fan. Um, all I do, if I if I run it for a longer time, for whatever reason, uh, I just touch the motor and, and as, as long as I can touch it, it, everything is fine. The same on the shaper. The motor gets warm at 25-30 uh, at hertz, but it doesn't really do anything. The motor is rated 0.75 kilowatt, but it, what you're actually consuming is probably about 200 watts, so that's not an issue. The second issue at the other side is is the maximum speed of the rotor design. So this thing will fly into bits at some point. We may take one apart at some point. Um, 
so there is a physical limit how, how fast you can spin that thing just by design because the, the balancing and 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 the, the third issue is actually the bearing rating if you got bearings which are not suitable for the high speed you will have some issues there as well but uh, again if you don't do that con continuously you can this motor runs easily at 3000 rpm even if it's rated for 900 uh, as long as you listen to it and watch temperatures and everything it should be fine the problem is if you run it at high speed the fa this fan is actually designed for um, 900 rpm so it moves a lot of air at 3000 rpm so i would actually remove the fan and put an external fan on if i use a very right wide speed range uh, because it, it just makes your motor more efficient at higher speed so let's assume we have this little motor here uh, we got a 400 volt main three phase and we got an inverter which is rated about two times the power of this electric motor here these are the things you need to have to run this motor at almost double the speed at, f at almost double the power because what we do is we we actually going to the edges of the uh, nameplate if you go back to our nameplate it says 240 450 volts so we know the motor well, f the highest voltage on the nameplate is 440 volts so this means we can run that motor safely at 440 volts because the insulation in the motor is good for that there are other mot motors around they say 460 470 volts uh, that indicates the insulation of the whole thing is good for that voltage it's the highest voltage you can find on the nameplate it's a very important information we need if you go beyond the limits of the of the straightforward thinking of the nameplate uh, so keep we keep in mind our 440 volts is our top end we can't go any higher because our mains will only have 400 volts uh, except you do some tricks and you can produce any voltage you want so let's assume we got a different diagram now this is our voltage and this is our frequency on our standard mains this is 230 volts at 50 Hertz we're talking about the lower voltage of the nameplate now it will become obvious why we're doing that we know our maximum voltage rating or our maximum safe voltage to run that motor is about 440 volts so if we say this is this is about the top of the graph is about 400 volts if we draw a line here we end up here at 87 Hertz so if we run that motor in Delta which is rated for 230 volts so we can't plug it into the socket anymore because it will just blow up but we can tell the inverter drive this guy here is actually rated 400 volts at 87 Hertz which gives us around about 1600 rpm I know it sounds stupid but it's actually the way to, you do it the only limit is the maximum rated voltage you can go slightly beyond it but I wouldn't recommend it because you don't know how good the insulation is um, and also a drive generally produces transients so you may spark your motor you don't want that so with, every mo with any motor you can use the low voltage run the motor on the high voltage at 87 Hertz we still run 230 50 Hertz that's our low voltage rating but this number 400 volts at 87 is not on the nameplate but it's inherited in the design of the motor so this is 1.72 times the power and the speed of our little guy here we keep about the same current all we do is increasing the voltage and the frequency 
So do not run that thing at 50 Hz, 400 volts in Delta. It will die straight away. It will pop your fuse. And that's exactly what an inverter drive does. And if you look at that graph again, if you, run, if you want to run that thing at about 25 Hz, half speed makes it... Full. So this is, this is 900 RPM, so this is about 450 RPM. What do we need? We need about half the voltage. So make that 115 volts. As, as long as you follow this frequency voltage curve, it will have the full torque. That means full rated current because on an electric motor, current usually reflects torque. Power is just speed times torque. Torque, that's just the result of the uh, rotation. But at standstill, you may have full torque, but no power because it doesn't turn. Um, however, it's consuming power from your mains because of all the losses and the magnetizing current and things like that. Uh, hope this is somehow understandable. So, so that's basically the principle of, of three-phase AC motor speed control. You can change the frequency, but you must change the voltage as well. The reason is, and that goes down to a bit more electrical basics, is because the inductance reflects a resistance simply speaking. With lower frequency that resistance gets lower so you need to lower your voltage. Otherwise you're driving too much current the thing will overheat and it will just burn and stink. I think this is the end of part one. Um, next part will be a bit more in detail of inverter drives and how you're gonna set up all or what all the parameters mean in an inverter drive. Also how you can run a 400 volt inverter drive on a 230 volt mains. Uh, things like that. Again, electricity is dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, keep your hands off, otherwise it might kill you. I'm not responsible if you kill yourself. Um, I think that concludes uh, part one of this uh, series. Thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions or comments put it down in the uh, comment field, I will reply.